It's very important to design your research to gather the correct information. A strong understanding of the most common types of research studies should assist you as you review the research of others, as well as helping you as you design your own research. Hopefully, this is a bit of review for you. This video will focus on three different types of research studies, the one-shot or cross-sectional study, trend or time series study, and longitudinal studies. The first type of research study is the most common, called the one-shot or cross-sectional study. This study is conducted once, meaning you have one shot at getting the data. Think of a camera. You have one chance, one shot, at getting the right picture. It is descriptive in nature because you are describing the population on the basis of one study. To understand the cross-sectional part of the name, assume you are slicing up some kiwi fruit. You take one of the many slices, a cross-section of the fruit, and examine that in detail. Now that slice may differ from the one before it and the one after it, but you just have that one slice to examine and draw conclusions from. This type of study examines data that were collected across a whole population to provide a snapshot of that population at a single point in time. Essentially, you are looking at a thin cross-section of the population, knowing that if you collected data at another time, you might find some differences. Say you are a small business and want to know what your customers are like and what they value. You may conduct a single study asking demographic and attitudinal questions. This would be a one-shot or cross-sectional study. But you might be interested in knowing if your customer demographics have changed over time. For that, you'd need to use a trend research study, sometimes called a time series. This type of study measures the same items over time, but with a different sample of the population each time. You are looking for a pattern or a trend in the data, often to see if you can predict future events. Say you're cooking spaghetti for a large crowd of people, a family reunion perhaps, you have to make a huge amount of sauce and you need to cook it in multiple pots. If you want to know if the flavoring is right, you sample from one pot, then wait a while, and then sample from another pot, then wait a while, and then sample again, and so on. You are going to the same source, the spaghetti sauce, using the same testing technique and testing for the same criteria, spiciness, texture, etc., but you are getting a different sample each time. At the same time, you are likely predicting what will happen next and when all that lovely spaghetti sauce will finally be done and the party can begin. In opinion research, you're asking the same questions each time, but of different people. Your goal is to determine what, if any, changes have occurred between the first time you asked the questions and the second time. One type of trend analysis used in market research is a pretest post test design. Let's say that you are interested in perceptions of mental health issues, and in particular, if exposure to a public education campaign might influence those perceptions. You could set up a study like this. Select a sample of the population and conduct a survey, asking a variety of questions. In this example, we're assuming four questions, and the sub one means that these questions were asked during time one, or the first time in the series. This would be the pretest, or the baseline survey. It is the starting point that future research will be compared to. Then the campaign occurs, or in scientific terms, the stimulus or the treatment is introduced. After the campaign, we then conduct the survey again, selecting another sample of the population, different people than who were interviewed the first time. We ask them the same questions we asked in the first survey, and I'm designating them sub two to identify these as coming from the second time in the series, the post-test. We can then compare the results from the pretest with the results from the post-test to see what, if any, changes have occurred. Now, being the astute researcher you are, you've probably realized that other stimuli, other than the campaign, might have influenced the results. In 2014, for example, the suicide of comedian Robin Williams brought the issue of mental health to the forefront. Any anti-stigma campaign run during that time period would have a difficult time proving that the campaign by itself was responsible for a change in perceptions and attitudes. That's why in most scientific research, particularly in medicine, the pretest post-test survey is usually conducted using an experimental design, where you use the same respondents, half of whom are exposed to the stimulus or the treatment, the experimental group, and half who are not, the control group allowing you to compare the differences between the pretest or observation one and the post-test or observation two 
and between the post-test results of the experimental group, those exposed to the stimulus, and the control group, those not exposed to the stimulus. This experimental design, though, is not really a trend study because we are using the same set of respondents. Remember that the trend study uses a different set of respondents for each time. But it is a nice way to transition to the longitudinal study. When you go back to the same person or the same group of respondents, you are conducting a longitudinal study, often involving more than two time series. Just as the trend study, the longitudinal study is used to measure changes, but you are gathering data from the same person every time. There are three different types of longitudinal studies. The first is probably the easiest to understand, a panel study, which involves selecting your sample to get a cross-section of individuals, different ages, sexes, geographic location, etc. Just as in the trend study, you conduct a baseline or a pretest, introduce a stimulus, and then go back to the same group of people to conduct the post-test or the second measurement in the series. A word about the stimulus. It might be a campaign, a drug trial, etc., or it could just be time. Things change over time. The second type of longitudinal study is a cohort. Dictionary.com defines a cohort as a group of persons sharing a particular statistical or demographic characteristic. A group of people who were born during a specific time period would form a birth cohort. Those who were exposed to a particular campaign could be a cohort. In our previous example about the experimental design involving an experimental and control group, those who were exposed to the stimulus or treatment would be one cohort, while those who were not would be a second cohort. CBS Sunday Morning profiled Michael Apted's work, a series of documentary films titled The Up Series, where he followed 14 British boys and girls from childhood to middle age, starting at age 7, which is why it's sometimes called the 7-Up Series. He filmed his interviews with them, and then, seven years later, interviewed and filmed them again, then seven years later, and so on. As of now, there have been eight films covering a time span of 49 years. This type of research is an example of a cohort study. You may be asking what the difference is between a panel study and a cohort study. It's a subtle but important difference. A panel study uses a representative sample. Remember that you are sampling a cross-section of individuals while the cohort study uses a sample with predetermined common characteristics. For example, a group of graduates that are the same age from different colleges with the same degree, they would make up a cohort, and you could study them every five years to see how they've progressed. A retrospective study is a longitudinal study that looks back in time, in retrospect. For instance, a researcher may look up the medical records of previous years to look for a trend, Again, you're following the same group of individuals, only this time, instead of looking forward, you're looking backwards. You will rarely find a retrospective study conducted for opinion research. Now, it may be used to analyze voting behaviors, but this type of study tends to be limited to medical research. Assuming you're taking my research methods course, where you have one semester to design and implement a research project, which type of study do you think we would be doing? Yes, time prohibits conducting more than one survey in a short semester, so we will be conducting a one-shot survey. Processing time. What are the three different types of research studies? What type of study would the U.S. Census be? As the U.S. Census is conducted every year to measure the demographics of the population, going back to the exact same people who were surveyed previously with the same set of questions, as well as adding in anybody else who shows up, it would be considered a longitudinal survey, specifically a panel survey. And how would you design a pretest post-test study? Here we focused on only the major types of research studies. There are more, but now as you read through research studies in your literature review and prepare your own study, you should have a better understanding of the possibilities that await you.